What's going on? My name is Ethan J and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today's video, we're gonna be doing one of the most requested things over on my Instagram, at Ethan J Design, if you wanna go follow me over there, and that is 3D logos and text. So today, we're gonna to be making a 3D logo this 3D logo to be exact. I use Photoshop and After Effects for my workflow in all of my 3D stuff, so that's what we'll be using today. But with that said, let's jump into Photoshop and get started. So we're in Photoshop. You can see we have a shape of the Hornets text logo. Now, this does work with live text this way that I do it, but for this specific video, I'll just be using a vector shape. So you wanna get a selection of your shape, Command C to copy it, and then you wanna open up After Effects. Here, we need to open up a new composition I have mine set to 2700 by 2700 because that's just what suits my design. You can change it to whatever it is you need it to be. We don't need to worry about any of these settings down here because we're not going to be exporting an animation. We're only going to be exporting a still frame. Then in the composition, hit Command Y to create a new solid. We can change the color to whatever, it's not really important. We just change this name to Vector Logo like that and hit OK. Then hit Command V to paste in our vector shape that we just copied from Photoshop. Then you can press Command T to just make everything a little bit bigger like this. Then hit Command Y again to create another solid. We can call this one 3D logo and change the color just to mix it up a bit. Now, I use a plugin by the amazing guys at Video Copilot called Element 3D. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that to this 3D logo solid. For the time being, we can turn this layer off now, the first thing we need to do is under custom layers and custom text and masks, we need to select our vector logo layer that we just added in. Then from there, we can go into scene setup to open up element 3D. Here, we just need to click extrude. And as you can see, that just creates a very basic extrusion of our vector shape that we pasted in. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the extrude on this just to give the logo a little bit more depth like this. And we can leave the rest of the settings for the time being because what I want to do is I want to add in a bevel outline around this whole logo. So the way we do that is right click, we're going to duplicate all, select the bevel and then go down to bevel outline and click enable. Now what this has done is created a bevel outline around everything where we can't see it just yet. So if I turn up the extrude just like this, you can see what I'm talking about. Now we just need to tweak a couple of these settings to make it look how we want it to look. First of all, I'm going to get rid of the bevel curve. I don't really like the bevel curve. You might like it, but I like the lines straight. So I'll just set that to zero and I'm gonna increase the bevel size like this. So this just basically increases the outline around the logo. Now you can change the inside and the outside bevel, but for this specific design, I wanna decrease the inside bevel and turn up the outside bevel. And that gives us a look like this, which I think looks really nice. Now we need to change the inside extrusion. And I like the outline white, but the actual inside, Eh, it looks a bit plain. So what I'm going to use is use one of the pro shaders also from Video Copilot. I'm going to go ahead, select a nice metallic texture. I'm going to go with the brushed metal. And as you can see, that's been applied, but I don't want to keep the gray metal look. Do I want to keep the texture? And that's easy enough to do. So all we need to do is go down to basic settings here, click on diffuse color and change that to the color that you want it to be. Now, in this case, I want it a nice teal, light bluish kind of color. So let's go ahead and select that. Something like this will work. Now you can see the reflections are still super bright and washed out. The way to change that is down in reflections, the color tint. I'm gonna change this to a nice bluish -y kind of color, like this, maybe like that, maybe a little bit more green. Something like that will do. Yep, that's okay. And there we go. I'm also gonna turn down the normal bump percentage as well. And that just makes the overall texture look a little less bumpy, I guess. A little bit less textury. You know? So we're already in a pretty good place, but we need to make it look even better. First of all, I'm gonna change the rotation on the X axis just to tilt the logo up a little bit. This just makes it look more dynamic and cooler, basically. Next, we need to add in ambient occlusion, which is like adding real life shadows onto your 3D models. We're gonna set that to ray trace because that's just a nicer form of ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna play around with these settings a little bit. I'm gonna turn the spread down just like that. And I'm gonna turn the max distance up a little bit, just like this. But you can play around with it because every design is gonna be different. So mess around and see what looks best for your 3D model. The next thing we need to do, which is really important to any 3D model is lighting. 
Now Element already has a default lighting setup in app and sometimes that looks great and sometimes it doesn't work as well. If I just click on show in background here, you can see where the lighting is coming from. It's just coming over here from this left hand side and the shadows over here on the right. So for this particular design, I want to get rid of that and I want to add in my own line. So I'm just going to turn down the exposure like this and that just gets rid of all of that default lighting for me. So now we just need to create our own light and I'm going to go ahead and create a parallel light. I'm going to change this color to white so it's a nice and neutral. I'm going to set this to parallel, click OK, and I'm going to move this light up and over to the right a little bit. This will just make everything look a bit more dramatic and a bit more shadowy. We don't want the light taking up everything. We want there to be some shadows. We want there to be some dark areas so it's more interesting to look at. Next, I'm going to create another light. This is going to be a point light though, and this is going to just brighten up everything a bit more in general. I'm going to move this over to the right over here next to the parallel light too, just so all the shadows and the contrasty areas are all lining up with our parallel light. Now, the next thing I want to do is add in a rim light. So I'm going to press Command D, just duplicate our point light here and move this down like that. So I'm going to center this up a little bit more, move it down and behind our 3D model. And if I go to the right side view, you can see where all of our lights are set up in comparison to our logo. You can see the parallel light and the point light up here at the top left and the new rim light down at the bottom here. So for this light in particular, I actually want to add some color to it. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to a nice Charlotte Hornets-y type purple color. Something like this will do and we'll just hit OK. And as you can see, that already made it look a thousand times better. It almost looks like a movie poster style title. So now if I just go ahead and turn off all of these lights, we can see what a massive difference a good lighting setup makes to a 3D model. So without the lights on, you can see it just looks flat and plain. And as we turn the lights on bit by bit, you can see it adds so much more character and personality to the logo. Now we just need to export. So I press Command, Option and S. And what that does is make sure that you're exporting a still frame and not an actual animation file. You wanna make sure the output module is set to PNG and alpha. That way you're exporting your logo on a transparent background and make sure your render settings are set to best. Then you just need to choose where you're gonna save it and hit render. Back on Photoshop, I feel like I'm back home. So what we're gonna do is drag in our logo that we just exported. So I'm gonna drag that in here like that. And already it's looking good, it's looking great. But in Photoshop, we can make it look that little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask and under the properties, I'm going to use color range to just select the cyans. So I want to get a selection of just this blue middle part of the logo like that. As you can see, the mask isn't perfect. So with the mask actually selected, I'm going to press command L to bring up levels and I'm going to move this slider on the right all the way over to the left until all the edges are nice and crisp like that. Perfect. For now, using shift, I can click on the mask again just to hide it because we don't need it right now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hue and saturation adjustment layer because I want everything to be a little bit more saturated. I went ahead and clipped that to our logo. Now I also want to create a curves layer. I'm going to clip that as well just to get everything a bit more contrast like this. Now let's create a solid color like this. Let's make it a deep kind of purpley kind of color, something like this. Actually, that might be a bit too dark. Let's bring it up a little bit like that. That will do. Now, let's put that into a group. Press Command G. And then I'm going to take our mask that we just created and drag that over on top of our group. Now I can adjust this solid field that I just created. I'm going to invert the mask, get a nice soft brush and paint in shadows there down at the bottom. Just like this. Like that over on this side as well. I'm perfect. Now this might be a little bit too bright. I might need to set this to multiply. That works. Now I just need to create another solid. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to get rid of the layer mask. I'm going to set this to a brighter teal color, something like this. And then I'm going to set this to screen. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a mask, invert it, and then paint in here at the top because I want the top to look all glowy and the bottom to look shadowy like this. Now I'm going to duplicate this solid again, and this is going to be an inner glow. I'm going to get rid of the mask. I'm going to set this back to normal and I'm going to turn the fill down to zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to all drag on the mask from our group onto this layer. Then we can double click in, add in an inner glow and I'm just going to change around these settings a little bit like this. I'm going to turn up the size a little bit, maybe change this to color dodge. I'm going to duplicate it one more time and this is going to be an inner shadow. So I'm going to reset all of this and turn that off, turn in inner shadow instead like that and just play around with some of these settings. It's going to turn up the opacity a little bit. Maybe make this like a darkest blue kind of color like that. Turn up the distance so it's a bit further from the edge. And I think we're good to go. The final thing I need to do is add in a texture. So I found this cool honeycomb texture from Shutterstock. So I'm just going to drop that in like that. 
I'm gonna scale this up. Now, the color of this isn't really important. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a hue and saturation to it, desaturate it, and I'm also gonna add a levels because I wanna make the dark super dark and the lights really stand out. Something like this, so we turn that down, move that over across like that. And that's perfect, that's it. Now we're gonna drop this below all of our layers, then using Command, Option, and Shift, I'm gonna pinch in at the top and make the perspective of this texture line up with our 3D text, something like that. You see how these edges all line up? That's exactly what I want. Now let's bring that back into the folder with the mask, arrange it a little bit to get a nice cool bit of texture. Actually, this works. And now we just need to set it to linear dodge like that. And there you go. We've got something that looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and drop this back into our old document with the flat logo just to see the difference. So this is where we started and this is where we ended up. And I mean, this is pretty much ready to be dropped into a graphic. So we might as well just open one up and see how it looks. Here's the design of the mellow ball I've been working on. If you want to see a breakdown for this design, let me know in the comments. I can definitely get that done. But as you can see, the 3D text looks right at home. And I mean, then it's up to you. You can do whatever it is you want to do. You can add in some lens flares, add in glows, anything. I'm just going to drop in a little lens flare like that. It's whatever fits your preference, but I just think this kind of 3D text adds such a nice little unique twist to any kind of graphic you're working on. And I hope you can incorporate it into your arsenal. I hope you liked the video. If you found it informative or helpful in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. I've got a new breakdown video coming very soon. So I'll see you on the next one. Peace.